Uh, all right. Look, a bit of economic news out today. Some new m- new unemployment figures that, depending on who you talk to, are larger or smaller than we expected. Some really interesting predictions of a growth in long-term beneficiary dependency. Average, I think, of 13 years on some sort of benefit, which seems crazy. We have predictions inflation is going to be lower than expected. We have uh, Shane Jones this week saying that he is going to introduce very quickly some new resource consenting um, laws. That means you'll be able to go straight to central government for projects of national significance and central government will give you the green light way quicker than local authorities. So there is stuff happening in our economy and we are finally, after all the breast beating um, and self-flagellation of Waitangi Weekend, it feels like we're getting back into business. What better time to have a a talk to our friendly economist, uh, Cameron Bagri from Bagri Economics. Uh, Cameron, nice to have you back on the show, mate. How are you? Good, sir. Yeah, very well. All right, the year is kicking off again. Firstly, I just want an overview from you. If you're going to paint a scenario for what sort of year we might have economically in New Zealand, uh, what are you thinking? Um, More of the same. (laughs) The the bottom line, Sean, is that we've still got an inflation problem. In fact, domestic inflation, what's called non-tradable inflation, which is really what the Reserve Bank controls, influences, yeah. has actually come in above expectation. You know, what does that tell us? You can't have an economy rocket along performing really well if you want to get rid of inflation. You know, so, so we're still in that underperformance, that slow growth zone, and that's just the function of having to pay the piper. You, you don't have good times and get rid of inflation. You need to have tougher times to get rid of inflation. So we've still got some tough times ahead, Cameron. Yeah, I think so. And the, the consensus is still the unemployment rate is going to move up. Yeah, you know, we've, we're seeing a little bit of stabilisation now. The you know, house price falls have been replaced by slight increases in house prices. Yeah, business confidence, business sentiment has improved a lot. You know, there is mm. a lot of hope that the government is going to wave a magic wand. I think I'd be pretty coy about that. You know, the, the big story here is a combination of the what's called the cycle, and the economic cycle is just all about getting us back into balance. And when you've got inflation, you know, you're non-tradable at 5.9, you know, that, that's a long way away from 2%, which is sort of where it needs to be. So that defines an underperformance period. Yep. And then we've got these deep-rooted structural issues. You, know, you drive around the country, sure, and you have a look at the quality of the roading network. We've got these road tones everywhere. There's more and more stories coming out about challenges we're seeing across healthcare. Defence can't get enough staff. Yeah, there's, a, there's this undercurrent of structural challenges we need to address at the same but time. But we cannot. Are difficult. you telling me, Cameron, we can't throw money at that stuff or stimulate to get those things going because it exacerbates the problems we've got? Well, that, that's the fine balancing act that yeah, the government is actually facing, but it's exactly the same for any business, Sean. I mean, you've got to make this sort of trade-off here between the long game for a short game. You know, so say you're in business and you're facing a bit of pressure, the temptation here is that there is to cut the guts out of costs, but if you go too hard on costs, you can undermine your business capacity to deliver your customer experience five years down the track. Yeah, so it's a question of getting that right balancing act. And, yeah, the government's got an awful lot of spending pressures that are coming out of education, health care, defence, the roading network, and, and those things need funded. Yeah, at the same time, you don't want to be throwing a lot more money into the economy because that could exacerbate inflation. And, of course, they want to turn deficit into surplus and so they don't want to keep borrowing them more. But, but, but yeah, getting that right balance between what's right in the near term versus still investing and making the right decisions for the long term, it's a really tough balancing act to strike. All right, here's a big question. Are tax cuts wise in these circumstances? I'll put it this way, you know, they wouldn't be a top five priority for someone like myself. You know, if I have a look at where we've got real big issues across New Zealand, there was a there was a speech came out from the Reserve Bank's chief economist, Paul Conway, about 10 days ago. And the the crux of it was that what's called the productive capacity of the economy, that's the supply line 
the ability to meet demand. That's that's the money line. That's determines whether we're really wealthy or not. And, and what he basically said was that look, we're all poorer now. Yeah, that is the line that we need to reconnect. Yeah, we need to be better with innovation, R and D, productivity, your yeah, labour force mobilisation, efficiency of capital and labour. All, all those obvious things that that we talk about that we're sort of not being delivering on. Yeah, you know, so if you're in government, yeah, that's the money line. That, that's the line you want to boost. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to throw stimulus as what's called the the fun line, the, the demand line, because you yeah, that's that that party line doesn't have an awful lot of substance. The substance line is the ability to deliver the goods, grow your economy year after year. Yeah, that economic base is what supports wellbeing. That provides the tax revenue that you can redistribute money, provide better education, provide better health outcomes, and, and build more infrastructure. So, folks, the government all about supply, not about stimulating demand. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Cameron. All right. Well, so maybe maybe Nicola Willis has got a, an excuse to, to drag the chain on, on tax cuts. And, and I know you, your business is often uh, advising businesses and, and corporates, Cam, but for the person in the street or for the average Kiwi mortgage holder, what's the smart thing to do this year? Don't, don't panic. Yeah. Unders and overs. Yeah, night follows day, day follows night. Yeah, the, the, the sun will get up in the morning. You know, we are going to experience you know, more difficult times. Now, if one size does not fit all, you know, some parts of the economy are still going to be um, pretty well over yeah. the next super, couple of years. Yeah, there's there's awful lot of demand still for better quality infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but the, mm. I guess the big yeah, the story for most people is that, and, and I don't like that catchphrase, but it's pretty apt, is it yeah, getting back to basics? Yep. You know? Yeah. Dollar coming out, coming in the door, needs going out the door needs to be matched by a dollar yep. coming in, in the door, and, and, and that's increasingly difficult when you've got yeah, general inflation is running at four point seven. But if you look at what's called cost of living inflation, mm. you know, everyday cost that's up seven percent. You know, so, so the money's ripping out the door at a fast clip. I guess the good news we saw in those labour market figures mm. yesterday, Sean, was that you know. Average out of earnings are up six point nine percent. Yeah, so we're still getting pretty good income growth in regard to money coming in the door, but yeah, you know, the layoffs are coming thick and fast. Yeah, you know, there's now three hundred and eighty thousand people on a benefit out there. You know, that's of yeah, you know, that's that, that's a big number of people. That is about twelve percent of the working age population is on a benefit as we speak. It's about twenty five thousand higher than what it was twelve months ago. Whoa! And those numbers are going to keep heading north. 